And thank you so much to Catherine and all of the student organizers who've put on such a wonderful event today. Uh, so my name's Alex McDonald. Um, I am, excuse me, uh, a public defender and a, a Benita Vista alumni. Does anyone know, does anyone know any public defenders or know what a public defender does? A couple people? Okay. What about uh, crime shows? Has anyone seen, uh, does anyone love Law and Order? A lot, yeah. So that show has a particular formula. There's a heinous crime, um, and the detective, by the end of the show, has solved the crime. They thought that the killer was the babysitter. It turns out it was the mailman. And when the detective is arresting the mailman, the real perpetrator of the crime, they read them their Miranda rights. The, te the detective will let them know, you have the right to an attorney. And if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed to represent you. That's me. My job is to represent people who have been charged with crimes and cannot afford their own attorney. And I'm being very serious when I say, when you've been arrested and charged with a crime, the government is against you. The entire weight of the government is against you. And if you lose this battle, you could be facing potentially long times and long periods of time in prison. If you've been charged with a federal crime, the charging document against you that lists the crimes that you've committed will read, the United States of America versus the defendant, Alex McDonald. That is a formidable system that you are against. So when I was asked to participate in this event and provide an outside-the-box solution to the problems plaguing the justice system, I felt overwhelmed. Where to even begin? Mass incarceration? the criminalization of addiction, fines that end up putting families into bankruptcy. But there's some encouragement and advice from the student organizers in this room. They suggested that I tell a story of one of my clients, a story where the justice system wasn't necessarily working against them, but was empathetic to the circumstances that led this person to be charged with a crime to begin with. So my solution to the problems plaguing the justice system is all of you. The future advocates in this room who will go on to law school will become public policy makers, will serve on juries. For all of you to inject humanity into the system every opportunity that you get. So the story I'm going to tell is one of my favorite clients, and I've had to change her name to protect confidentiality. Uh, so we'll call her Isabel. The first time I met Isabel was outside of the courtroom before her initial court appearance. Um, I was already annoyed because this young woman was over an hour late and she was facing very serious charges. So I walk out of the courtroom and I call her name and the young woman who approaches me I thought was the child of one of my clients. She's 18 years old, but she doesn't look a day older than 16. She's 90 pounds soaking wet and she's wearing a McDonald's uniform that's comically big, probably three times too big for her. And she apologized to me and let me know the reason that she was late is because her manager wouldn't let her get to court on time to leave her shift early. Needless to say, Isabel's had a tough go of life. She spent her childhood and her teenage years growing up between San Diego and Mexico because when her family couldn't afford to pay rent and they would become homeless, they would move to Mexico to try to find cheaper rent. She started working multiple jobs as a teenager and in school, and she ended up dropping out of school at the age of 17. She lived with her father and helped him provide for their family. She worked at McDonald's and Marshall's and was attending adult school um, at the age of 17. When I met her, she was 18, and she had gotten caught up with some um, older people in her neighborhood who were involved in criminal activity. And these people supported her. When her family couldn't afford to pay for her food or clothing, it was these people who were there for her that provided her emotional and financial support. But it was also these people that led her to be charged with stealing a vehicle. They were involved in a stolen car ring, and um, she got involved in the justice system through them. And she did not handle this case well. She was terrified of the amount of time that she could be doing in prison. And I tried to reassure her that everything was going to be fine, but the reality is she could be pacing up to three years in prison for the crime that she was charged with. And I got to know her in depth, a lot more than some of my other clients, because I was determined to not let this young woman be eaten up by the justice system. 
When she lost one of her jobs, I got her a job with the ACLU doing community organizing during the election. I got to know her hopes, her fears, her dreams, her ambitions. And I felt that if the prosecutor could see this young woman the same way that I did, that they would be compelled to help her, that they wouldn't seek this felony conviction that would negatively affect her for the rest of her life. Because up to that point, they had given me no love. They had given Isabel no love. Every time I had asked for them to dismiss the felony charge that would have led to adverse consequences for the rest of her life, they said no. To them, she was just a name on a piece of paper who got involved in a stolen car ring. So when Isabel decided she didn't want to fight her case and go to trial, I decided to take another tactic. We had a hearing, a pretrial hearing, and ordinarily someone wouldn't testify at something like this, but I asked her to testify. And I asked the head of the prosecutor's unit to come and watch her testify. This was a man that I had worked with for several years, and I knew him to be compassionate and have a big heart. And I knew if he saw what I saw in her, that he would be moved to, to come up with a different solution in the case. So I put her on the stand, and the prosecutor agreed to come. He supervised many attorneys as a very busy man, but he came to this hearing and he sat in the back of the courtroom. Now she got onto the witness stand, her hands started to shake. She'd never spoken in front of a room full of people before, and her freedom was truly at stake. Her hands started to shake and this tears started to roll down her eyes. But in a moment of bravery and courage, she continued forward. She answered the difficult questions that I was asking of her in front of a room full of people. She described her background, the circumstances that led her to be charged with this crime, the hardships and struggles that she faced. And after the hearing was over, I discussed the case with that prosecutor, and I showed him the photos of her working with the ACLU, doing community organizing, and showed him the potential that he had. And he agreed. He dismissed the felony charge against her, which... I expected him to do. I felt that if he saw her and was compelled by her story, he would do the right thing, and he did. But something else happened that I wasn't expecting, and that's that the victim of this crime was also present in the courtroom while she was testifying. And this victim was the owner of the vehicle that had been stolen, and she had a family of her own. She used that vehicle to take her kids to school. She suffered because of the loss of that car. She suffered economic loss. But when she saw Isabel testify and she understood the circumstances that led her to commit this crime, she was also moved and felt connected with this young woman. And what I found out later is that she had also approached the prosecutor and let him know that she didn't want this young woman to have a felony conviction on her record. And she had even asked if there was anything that she could do to help her. And the victim in this case was brought into the process, and it became restorative. She felt that she, had, that she had achieved justice in this case as well. And for all of you, you are going to be future advocates. You are going to go on to law school. You're going to be public policy makers. You're going to serve on jurors. And you have the ability to redefine the system. You have the ability to redefine the system in a way that gives prosecutors incentives for giving defendants resources to get their lives back in order. You have the ability to redefine the system in a way that rewards attorneys when they work out resolutions to cases that don't involve putting people in prison. You have the ability to bring in victims into the process to give them justice and make them feel whole by connecting them with the defendant. So my solution to all of the numerous problems facing the justice system is all of you and the humanity that I believe that all of you can inject into the system. Thank you so much.